guys how are y'all doing how is your day going and if it's just starting how was your night hope you had an amazing um night rest um yeah so i decided i was going to start a new series on the channel and it's going to be covering every single field in computer science that is data science software engineering full stack development and so on and I was going to start with one of the basic, which is full stack development. So um, full stack development is um, in two categories. You have um, the front end and the back end developers. So we're going to focus on the front end developers in the first part of the series. So um, front end developers, we're going to cover HTML, we're going to cover CSS, we're going to cover JavaScript, we're going to cover bootstrap and every other thing involved so this video is gonna be a full dive into um we're gonna be a full dive into html <clears throat> so i guess as most of you all know html is a hypertext markup language is very easy to learn it's very easy to understand and there's nothing really complex about it so we're just gonna kick it off with all the basic things you need to have. Um, HTML doesn't demand much. All you need is a web browser and a text editor. So I'm going to link down some of the text editors I usually use. You have Sublime Text, Notepad++, and Visual Studio Code. In this tutorial though, I'll be making use of Visual Studio Code. So once you have created the folder saved with .html, that is how you save your HTML file, we can get started. Alright, so um, there is a very basic structure to, um, to HTML. So you would first have your doc type. This doc type is what states the type of file which you are running in this case is html next you are going to have the beginning of your html tag and within this html tag is where you have all the other contents of your website like your head and the body so your head tag would contain your title tag the title tag is where you'll see if you like run a website the title tag is like this header place up here i don't really know what you call that place <laughs> but that is where your title tag is so it will contain the name of your title tag it also contains meta information and um, your body is what contains the whole content of the website so if you are using visual studio code you can easily just run this by using your exclamation mark and tab and it will print out all your um, HTML structure for you. You can see they added the little extra things which I didn't add. All these are not compulsory but it's advisable in some cases. For example, here it declared a language which we want the website to run on. That's why if you now run your site, let's say if you're using a different language, you, the browser would pop up the translate tab. Here you have um, all your meta tags, like you have the one for rem making the site responsive and you know, the whatever. So this is the title, we'll change the title of this site, let's just change it to... Um, okay. So in, in this tutorial, I want by the end of the tutorial, I've also have created a landing page. So everything we're building would be towards the landing page. So once you even go to CSS, it will start. So right now, we're just going to have a boring, plain HTML page, and we're going to proceed with it. So let's just give it HTML tutorial. And um, now we can get into the site. All right. So, um, one of the most common things that programmers 
tend to, you know, use a lot are comments. So for those of you who don't know what comments are, they, um, I, I honestly don't know how to explain it, but comments enable you to keep sort of like bookmarks, literally leave comments on your programs, which the compiler or whatever the browser doesn't read, but you as the developer on the coding surface can see and read to understand what you are doing. So let's, in HTML, this is how you leave a comment. So you have your, um, your less than arrow, you have the exclamation mark, two dashes, and within you have the extra two dashes and the closing. Within this, you are going to leave your comments. So let's just say um, a comment, because I don't really have any comments to leave yet. And now let's get into one of the most popular um, HTML tags, which are the H1, the heading tags. So um, let me just make it into six. Okay. So um, there are six different heading tags, all of which are of different sizes. So we're going to just see all the sizes now. All right. <clears throat> so let's just leave something um, in between all of them. Okay. And another very popular um, tag that is quite common in um, HTML is the paragraph tag, which we would actually use most of the time because it's literally like almost all our programs when we are leaving text and other stuff are within the paragraph. And if you just want to write a blunt text, when it comes to styling it, it's going to be really complex. <clears throat> so let's just, this is a paragraph. All right, we save our program and we're going to run it in your browser. So as you can see, this is the paragraph tag. It's the normal sized paragraph. Then when you come to your heading, this is your H1, H2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So as you can see, the higher it goes, the lower, the smaller the text becomes. So they are all bold, but smaller size sizes. Okay. <laughs> Another thing um, you would like to look into, which we also would tend to use a lot for when it comes to like um, links. Links, you would need them when you are doing your navigation, when you want to link to an external page, or even within the um, web page or the website. So you do this using the, um, the A tag, which contains attributes. So in um, HTML, we have the um, tags, which are everything enclosed within this weird bracket. And the attributes are the contents within the tag. For example, this is an attribute. Um, this is an attribute. This is an attribute. This href is an attribute. So the href is going to link us to the website. So let me just look for a random website and just place that within our tag and we'll just leave a text maybe just click here very busy click here and we can save it so mind you our site is going to look very very ugly throughout this whole process but when we're entering css we're going to be able to style it so this is the click here tab and if you click on it it's going to take us to the notepad okay so now another attribute that is very um, common within the href, within the link tag is the target. What target does is how you want to, it kind of states how you want to open a link. So you have um, cell, which opens on your current window, you have, um, blank which opens in a new window and there's also parent and top so um let's just we're going to just focus on self and blank and um, we're going to just try to let's do target 
let's use blank first. So this should take us to a new tab, refresh. And let's click. So you can see opened another tab here. See the other tab I was using. And if you leave it blank or if you use cell, then we should be left on the exact same page. Okay. Alright, um, so um, next thing we want to work on is the table. So let's just add a horizontal row and let's work on table. So the table is very simple. You first place your table tag and within the table you would want to have your rows and your columns. So let's create the first um, row, which is going to be for our header. So to make the headers, we want it to almost be like the heading tags, but for tables. So we use T head. So let's just have, um, should we do, let's do a calendar. So we have, um, have our headings next we want to create um the columns which will hold the date so we have one two three four five six seven so let's create seven rows okay then inside the rows are going to have seven columns let's just copy this And we're going to change the H to D and um, all right, so um, we'll change this one also to D and we'll just copy it. Okay, so as you can see, we have the table. So we're going to learn to style it better um, once we are diving into CSS. But yeah, this should be all for now. Covered um, tables. Next, we want to go to lists. So there are three main types of lists in um, HTML. There's unordered list, ordered list, and description list. So we're just going to um, we're just going to write each of these. Like is it HTML is very basic and straightforward. So we'll just write each type of the list and. We'll draw it so you can see how each and every one of them are um, written. So let's start with unordered. So unordered list uses the tag ul, <clears throat> and within the ul, this one is common for both lists. You use li, which is like star listing an item. Next, let's cover ordered list. So other list also uses its own special tag OL within it to use LI. Let's use the same thing. And now we have the third list. This one is a little bit different. So this is the description list. Okay, so for the description list, you have the DT and you have DD. So the DT is like the title or the main thing you are describing. And with least, let's you go back to our plot. And next you have DD, which is like the description. So let's say you can have a plot. 
let's just make two of it okay i think i should just all right so let's save that and run it okay so you can see it we have a part we have this description okay on other list we would just leave them using um stuff like dots shapes while other list uses um numerics uses alpha numerics using num roman numerals and description just states and explains so they are pretty much straight um, straightforward <laughs> So for this next part of uh, the tutorial, I thought we'd do a little page sectioning. So I don't know exactly what they are called, but as you know, every site has its section. So let's just um, work on that. So the first part is going to be everything is done within the body. Every the body, every the first part is going to be the header. So in between in between the header, that's where we're going to have our navigation bar. So we can just leave this place on hold. Let's just put navigation here. And let's maybe comment it. So because right now and we have not added any CSS features to it. So it may be a little confusing. So we have our header. Below the header, we want to have the main section of the body. Okay, so we are getting used to this. You can use main, or you can use section in an article. Then um, below the main, we want to have a side, which is going to be like a, the sidebar. And next, we want to have our footer. So let's just pull. So once you start adding CSS features to the site, everything is going to start falling in place. But for now, everything will just look like one boring page. But um, yeah, when you want to start designing your site, tags like this actually make um, you know, figuring out what each individual function of the site is, and we're going to dive into it shortly so let's just um let's save this page and uh, we'll come back for it very soon i'm going to look into the forms of um forms in html so um this is our form tag and inside we have two attributes we have the action attribute which i left blank but this method attribute this is what i usually focus on so two of the most popular types of um method attributes are get and post get is what i um, use most because what you want to do is kind of like get the information from the submitted form usually when you want to validate a login form you need to get the input get the username get the password and validate it before you can carry out any function so um next we want to look into um we want to look into the inputs in the form so i'm just going to create a basic form type but if you would like to see other um other types of um form inputs method in um html you can easily google that either way let's start with the basics label this label is to give us the name for the input so we just want name and name all right so we want to input a text and we'll input type text we're going to give it an id right now since we're not getting anything we're doing but if we're working the id is what will allow us to get the particular input which was um, being sent or which was being received by the user. 
So the ID is going to be similar to this four up here. So since we use name, the ID is going to be name. And um, let's just set a name. So also a name. You can also set stuff like placeholders, which will be the text inside the um, input box. Okay. Let's break it. Next, we want to let's um, use a radio input and just get a yes or no for a random question. So um, let's get a text. Um, are you above? 18. All right, so here's going to be a little bit confusing. So let's receive our input first, and we're going to change this to radio. Okay, and we're going to give it an ID. Now, this ID is going to be for the input, not for the radio. So the input, let's say yes, and now the name is what is going to be referenced to the radio. So all radios with similar names are going to be linked together, which means if we have 10 different radios, um, radio inputs that have the same name, none of them will be allowed to be active at the same time. Because for radio inputs, you can only have one active. So the names for all similar, input, um, all similar radio inputs should be the same. Let's use K. And um, just set the value so that once we get the function, yes and we're going to have a label tag which will show us what it is because right now it's just the input that exists once we run at the back end we'll be able to know what it is but the users viewing it on the front end wouldn't really know what they are looking at so we'll get a label and the four is going to be equal to the same id as this one here and set the name to yes and let's break it so we'll just copy this and paste it. So now we want it to be no, no, all right. A more right type of input is popular, a checkbox. Now the difference between a checkbox and the um, and a radio box is that checkboxes allow you to have multiple inputs. You can select more than one. So let's create a checkbox. All right. The input method is almost similar to that of um, to that of a radio button. Okay, so here the ID is also going to be different, but the name and value are also going to be different. Do you understand? So here the name the ID and the value for all inputs that they differ. So, you know, let's just leave the checkbox. We practically understand it. So the input is similar to that of um, a radio box, but instead of having similar names, names differ. So let me just quickly add the submit. Then add the submit button. Okay, and um, let's just have a quick preview of what the other input types are. We'll just clean this type and re-enter it so we can see that. Okay, so as you can see, you have different input types. You have button, you have a checkbox, you have color, you have date, date, time, email, file, 
So just depending on what you need, okay, it starts right here from week, URL, time, text. So you can just select the type of input you need and build your form based on that. Forms that HTML is very, very easy and very straightforward. All right. So you have your name, you have what is it? Oh, that's all right. So you have your name, you can enter your name. You can see we cannot have both of them active at the same time. But see what happens now if I change the name on both regions. Let's just add another and save it. Refresh the page. Select name. And now both of them can be active at the same time. So depending on what the individual input are, that's that's actually basically it. So I'm going to just pop up a screen showing you um a list of how to um add other inputs and you can pause, pause the screen and take note of it for yourself else that's it all right so now we're going to um recreate the um we're going to start working on the landing page so it's going to look very basic right now, but once we are done with everything, once we start adding the CSS, it's all going to come together. So I just thought maybe we would just pick a template that we would work with. So um, let's see. So we're going to recreate this page. So right now, once we just add our C our HTML, you look very plain, but I promise once we put everything together, it's going to be okay. So um, let's try and break it down. So we have a background image, yes. We have um, the first section. So I haven't introduced you guys to Div yet. But divs are like container boxes which holds different sections of your um, site. So let's create our first div for this section. So we have our header, we have the nav inside our main. We're going to create a div. And we can give this div an id let's see what id it is if you notice like what is who at so these are our home so it gives an id of home okay now inside the div we have page four probably We have H2 or H1. And we have, let's also use the C. Let's use H3. I didn't copy something. All right, and we're going to have a button which is explore. So we just create a button tag. Okay, so let's run it and see. Okay, nice, right? Okay. All right, so the next div is going to be the um, about. 
So let's just create a div and set the ID to about. So inside it, we have we have another div. So let's create another div and let's name this. Um. Hmm. Okay, let's create another div. We'll create. We have five is the about section. Okay, so one. Two, we'll create three different divs inside it. So the first one. Second one. And let's set the ID of the first one to be project. Okay, so inside this ID, we can start putting comments. This is going to be the name. Right, and inside this particular one, we're going to create three other divs. So let's do that. Okay, and um for well, the first one is going to be an image so we can get icons from favicon but i don't want to start adding favicon now so we can use an image but you know what? i'm just going to leave it blank i'll just leave this page blank so just when we're doing our css to add it so let's just do our text Then um, for the next section of our about the this is going to be an about us with an image. And inside this particular div we're going to have two divs. So the first one is going to be an image. Let me get an image we'll use this is for some time. All right, so we have it here. So we're going to remember how to add images. So image. So as we, did I show you guys how to add images? I don't remember. But image, adding images is very simple. The image tag is image. Then source is to point to the location of the image. Which is black backslash since is the exact location where we are. And an alt is like alternate text in case the picture doesn't show very well. We can leave it completely blank for now. You can also add extra fixtures like setting the width, setting the height, but we're not styling anything now. So let's just continue. Okay, the second div is going to contain the text. So we have And um, next we have services, so let's create another team. And let's do it, create six teams. If you are not really comfortable with HTML, with CSS, also you can also use tables to bypass it if you wish. I'm just going to give each and every one of them the exact same clothes. Then once we start editing it, we differentiate them. And next we have um this is going to be a gallery. Okay, I'll use a table for this. Yes, we'll use a table. All right.
let's place it inside a div also and the div is work I'm just testing out something here. I've not really started anything yet. I'm just have to duplicate this. Alright, so it's not reading the images. Alright, so I figured out what the problem was. Was that um um, backslash I kept in front so I've removed it and um, I ran it again and now the images are showing so that's good so let's create the next row let's just copy and paste this then I'm going to remove two and there's this stuff called call and I think that's what they call it it's to merge um, images um imagine cells so let's just merge two cells together let's see how that looks i'm just doing this off my head so if it doesn't work we'll find something okay it works so we'll just use styling to drag the images together slash progress so now I'm just copy and paste this one for the next row i know in the picture it showed three so don't worry i'm going to work on that once we're working with our css css but right now, I just want this to look okay. So we are done with work. What's our next div? Okay. All right. Um. Okay. We need to have another gallery for team members there are all these hover functions we'll work on it as everything moves forward so don't worry about that okay okay so we'll just start the line spacing between it in CSS. Okay. We can even reduce the picture and add um, radius, border radius. Okay, this is like a testimonial. So we'll work on this testimonial, but I'll just leave the space blank All right now. Let me just create a div for it. Let me create a div here. So we'll just leave the space blank and we're going to work on it later. And I'm now pricing. Alright, so let's um let's add um Okay, and um, let's add a button. And let's just test it and see if it works. Okay, it does. It works. Nice. So we'll just leave this for now. I will style it later. You know what? We can even go to the website and look for other things that we can cheat our way through, like this one. Well, let's just leave them all for now. When we come back in our next video, we'll correct everything. Let's work on subscribe to our newsletter.
So this B will be for um latest news. And the next div is going to be where we'll have our newsletter. Inside it, we're going to have a form. All right, then let's just go to the next section, which is going to be our form. All right, so we are going to take a name. Next, we want the email address. And we want the text area for the message and the send button. Let's save it and see what the output is. Okay, looks good. And let's add a submit button. And I guess that's pretty much it for right now. Okay, so let me just add a break here. Alright, so I know the website doesn't look like much right now, but we have tried and um, let me, okay, I'm not adding CSS now, no. So we have tried and um, in our next video, we're going to style it. So if you enjoyed this video watching, don't forget to give it a like, share the video and come back same time next week for the CSS part of the code. I would link everything that needs to be linked in the description below. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye.